just a mind sculptor. He may be playing events around the end step and just starting the beatdowns that way. And he just played ultra conservatively, which, you know, some people may have disliked or, you know, judged him for that. But he was getting himself in a situation where he could not lose. Yeah. It was actually impossible. And you, you you see that a lot in Legacy, I find, um, especially when people play decks like Blue Light Miracles. Like, they'll, they'll set up these situations where they definitely can't lose the game, but they're not really trying hard to win it. Yeah. So, and we saw that earlier where you, you, know, you end up drawing matches because of that, you know? So, um, I think, again, if, if, if Jacob's on the play, I believe, is that true? Um, is Jacob the higher seed in this? Um, Jacob, let me confirm with you really quick. Jacob is not going to be on the play. Jacob is the four and Jack is the three. Okay, so, um, is actually going to be on the draw, which... Um, Again, I don't think it's uh, too bad for him just because his deck is, uh, you know, he can still win on turn two. Um, gives him an extra draw step for a Cabal Therapy. Um, and Gitaxian Pro, Pro Cabal Therapy is, is the kind of draw that um, Jacob's going to be able to go off if he has his combo, regardless of what's in Jack's hand pretty much, you know. Sure. Uh, because game one, Jack doesn't have many permission spells. He has four Force of Wills one counter spell, um, but that's really it. He doesn't have cards like Spell Pierce or Spell Snare or anything like that can, that can, that can, that can counter um, anything that Jacob's trying to do. So again, uh, Jacob knows this, so even if he doesn't have a Cabal, uh, Cabal uh, Gitaxian Probe, he can just go Cabal Therapy, you name and force a will. Nope, okay, let's see if you have the one counter spell in your deck. Yeah, you know? showtime. Yeah, yeah. so. Um, even though he's not on the play, I still like Jacob's position right here. And there's even one card in this deck that's a little bit unique to see. As you see, there's one copy of Silence in this deck as well. So, you know, if yeah. he does draw that, he can kind of lead out there with that. Um, and, you know, if that gets countered, he's probably going to, you know, use that as the green light. And if it doesn't get countered, then all systems go. Mm -hmm. so. And the real question is, are we going to see uh, a turn two counterbalance from, ja counterbalance from Jack? You know, turn two counterbalance is, um, even, though he can, even though he can't activate... You know, um, even a, a land could be devastating because mm -hmm. it counters those Lotus Petals. And as we saw earlier, um, Lotus Petal is very important for Jacob sometimes. So, um, Some people tweeting us here in the booth wondering why this deck is called Tin Fins. Uh, don't ask me. I'm no. against it. Yeah, I'm not, not, not quite sure either uh, why the name, why it is called that. So uh, you guys... we, we found out earlier, apparently, and I, I can't believe this is true because it's so stupid, but... Uh, apparently, it's from an episode of C Lab 2021. That's what we're getting on Twitter. Is it bad that I don't know what that show is? C Lab 2020. I think it's a Adult show on Adult Swim. Adult Swim, yeah, of course it is. All those shows with those goofy names. It's a from a restaurant, restaurant called Grizzlebees. From a restaurant from called so Grizzlebees. Are, okay. Oh, hey, that's not. <laughs> Uh, the episode was called Tin Fins. Yeah, that's, well, that's not obscure at all. So, legacy <laughs> players and their deck names, I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's no dumber than, um, you know, Call Blade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever. Every, every, every magic deck name is stupid. Yeah. Wow. That's how you, that's how you really feel. Oh, what'd you lose to? Eggs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, do you like the shard names for deck names? Like John Nesper? No, those are stupid too. If you don't know anything about magic, like my mom, like will, uh, will hear my, me, me and my friends talk, and she's like, "What are you? What are you guys talking about? You ever talk about magic at a restaurant? People around you probably think you're an alien." You know, it's the same way I hear. Like, whenever like you're sitting at a table and I hear people talking about like um, World of Warcraft, like I don't play World of Warcraft, but like I, 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 I feel sorry for the people who are sitting around us at restaurants when we're just talking about magic. Because we must sound like the weirdest human beings on earth. Hmm. Not sorry about it at all. Hey, so what'd you do this weekend? I went to a tournament, I played Tin Fins. Uh, <laughs> ended up playing against Sneak and Show a couple times. But that Tin Fins deck is great. Oh yeah? That's awesome. Did you play against Maverick? <laughs> Maverick? Who plays Maverick anymore? No way, man. There's too much blue-white miracles out there. Imagine you heard that conversation <laughs> at a restaurant. <laughs> we should just have decks like, you know... Actually, I guess reanimators. <laughs> There's really no good names out there. You can't, you can't, you can't name it for the public, for the, for the muggles. Yeah, you know? yeah. Which, which, what should we call it? Blue, white, red. Because yeah. that's gonna make a lot of sense. Yeah. Sixty card trading card game, yeah. version seven. Yeah. 
<laughs> like no matter no matter what we say, it's gonna be tough for him to understand it. But it's the game we know. It's the game we so love. So there we go. There's your answer. It's a uh, it's from a C Lab 2013 ca cartoon. 2021. 2021. 2021. Yep. If so, if you watch Adult Swim at three in the morning, you would get that reference. Yeah. And if you don't, then you won't. If, yeah. I guess we're just not hip enough. Uh-oh, we have an episode summary here. Uh, episode plot summary from Twitter. The crew of Sea Lab are in a preview for the movie Tin Fins, which adds for the restaurant. Grizzlebees. Oh, come on. Thank we're you, Runst MTG. Thank you. I appreciate that. Listen, I am a self-proclaimed nerd. We're all nerds. We're all geeks. Yep. But do we really have to start naming our decks after episodes of Sea Lab 2021? I mean, come on. Let's... <laughs> let's... <laughs> Okay, let's let's name it after like sports teams like, yeah, the, like the New York Knicks. Yeah, and cereal like Fruity Pebbles. Yeah, yeah like absolutely. manly stuff. Yeah, absolutely. When's the next combo deck gonna be called Cinnamon Toast Crunch? Because it'll be the best one because it's the best cereal. Like Maverick's a good name. You know, that's like that's from Top Gun. That's a good name. Yeah. Tin Fins. Yeah. You done? Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> the final spots be underway here. Jack Another is keeping, moment. and Jacob is not. You want to go to rant while Jacob's shuffling? You can. No, I'm not going to rant about deck names anymore. Okay, fair enough. I feel I'm I'm a little upset that uh, Jacob has the mulligan because I'm I'm rooting for ten wins. You're biased. I'm a little biased, okay. mostly because if he wins, it means the match will be over in ten minutes, and not eighty-seven. But look at ja I mean, but look at Jack's sweet shirt. You know what that is? Is this a cart? Uh, it's a video game. Yes, what it is. Is that? is that Legend of Zelda? I believe it is Legend of Zelda. Yes. I wish we could zoom in on that a little bit there. I'm on the jack side of things right now. That's that is a, a good shirt. Yeah. shirt. yeah, you know what? You sold me. Yep. It's not hard to do. Turncoat. So, um, yeah, it looks like Jack kept his opening seven. Is is Jacob on six now? He's taking one mulligan thus far, so okay, he's so. going to be looking at six. Makes you wonder, one thing about this deck I'm super curious about is how well does it mulligan? Because the, the pieces of this deck are so strange and unwieldy. You know, are you mulliganing just for Entomb? But, you know, some of your opening hands can look real goofy with, like, Shadow Grave, Gora's Vengeance, <laughs> The Silence, The Tendrils of Agony, Children of Corliss in your deck. You know, some of the opening hands can look strange. I, I don't know. Any Again, it's a two-card combo deck. Um, and um, it has four copies of Brainstorm, four copies of Ponder. So I think any deck like that generally is not going to mulligan badly, you know? Okay. Um, there's, there's plenty of six-card hands, I think, that you can get that are perfectly reasonable right. and still allow you to go off on, on turn two. We are underway here in the final Star City Games Open Series in Las Vegas. About there we to, go. About to crown a champion it's as awesome. we see Jacob Kessica Taxi and Probe. And that is a huge card here. Like we said, we thought it was a good card in the matchup. <gasps> And there is a main deck rest in peace. How did we not mention that? I don't know. He has, he has three of them. <laughs> main deck rest in peace, which kind of puts a damper on Jacob's plans. That makes it a lot harder to win. Like a lot harder. Like impossible. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's a, an answer to it in the main deck, is there? Uh, taking a look at it right now. Um, and then we have that classic zoom in to give you uh, an idea. We see, a like force a will. Steady cam. we see a force will rest in peace, a planes, a scalding tarn, a polluted delta, and a brainstorm here. So Jacob is going to take a look at those cards like a taxi and probe, write them down. You're going to see a lotus petal. Um, what can he do here? Lotus petal. And he's going to cast brainstorm. Looks like he's trying to just win this turn. <laughs> On. <Dude. laughs> you see him take a good look at Jake there. Well, we did. Have, we have a ritual. He could, he could theoretically win this turn. I mean, it is possible. He, he has a ritual, which is the, the one thing he needs. If he has an Entomb and Shallow Grave, um, that's, that's, that's the second part. And all he needs is a Kabbalah Therapy to deal with the, uh, um, the Force of Will. Um, but again, even if he gets a Kabbalah Therapy, he can at least get rid of the rest in peace. Yeah. Um, but like Jack will likely but fight force force will. Yeah, he'll, yeah, so. he'll fight over that. Um, so you're going to see you're gonna see Jacob resolve his Brainstorm. He's going to sacrifice the Blue Delta, shuffle the garbage away. Um, likely search for an Underground Sea here. Um, and we'll see what he's going to do. As there's your Underground Sea, a beautiful one there. Black border and all. I wonder if Jacob will just concede if the Rest in Peace actually does resolve. Because I'm not sure he has any answer to it. Unless he just ramps up to 8 mana and casts Grizzlebrand. I mean, he could Dark Ritual a bunch into that, as you're going to see Cabal Therapy. Oh, so he does have the Cabal Therapy. But it looks like we're probably going to get a fight over that. Well, we'll see who he's targeting with that, too. That could be a little interesting. That's true. 
He also has a Lotus Petal in his hand. So yeah, he's going to cast Brainstorm in response. Hit one. Oh, counter wow. spell. Vendillion Click. Force of Will. So, again, the question is, though, does he want to hide the rest in peace and let the Force, let the Cabal Therapy resolve? Yeah, that's, that's a very scary um, proposition. Because, like, if he lets it resolve, then Jacob knows that he hid the rest in peace. Yeah, for so sure. So Jacob can name Force of Will. Yeah. Which means that if he does have... Rich, uh, Lotus Petal Ritual um, and Tomb Shallow Grave then he wins the game but I don't know if he does he have four cards does he, he would literally need that perfect combination of cards alright here's Cabal Therapy what's he naming we'll get confirmation on the name here um, looks like he might have just still named Rest in Peace uh -huh. yeah so it looks like he he basically said my only way to beat Rest in Peace is by naming it and hope that you messed up or tried to rebluff me by not cast by not hiding it so yeah. There's um, rest yeah, of and there it is. So again, he has a, he could he could hard cast it. It's not impossible. Yeah, and and, and again, I, I I kind of like just naming Ca Force of Will there, just because you know, again, you have to assume that Jack's gonna hide if if he lets it resolve. You have to assume he's gonna hide the rest in peace. Yeah, for sure. So why not just get rid of those two Force of Wills so that your plan of actually casting Grizzleband could work. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he would have caught one Force of Will as Jack did hide the other one, and he does have a counter spell in his hand, so he would have been able to catch one of them, but Jack would have drawn into another one there. And, and granted, I'm not saying that plan has a high success rate, <laughs> yeah. but uh, it's certainly, you know, one of the ways that Jacob could actually still win this game. Yeah, I'm not entirely convinced that Jacob can win this game. Obviously, there's no reason for him to concede. No. Um, but I'm not entirely sure, you know, outside of getting a little bit fortunate and being able to actually cast a... Uh, a gristle brand it seems like it's gonna be pretty hard again scanning his deck list you know we don't find a main deck echoing truth or anything like that to yeah. get uh, he, to he, get it off the board he literally has no answer to it he could just try to win with the tendrils he yeah. can go you know ritual ritual lotus petal getaxian pro ponder huh? um you know he, but again he only has one tendrils of agony so uh, and there you it's see, gonna be tough to pull there that you off. see a vanillian click uh, targeting Jacob, you see a hand of Lotus Petal, Silence, Chrome Mox, Dark Ritual, and Gristlebrand, so just doesn't have the Shallow Grave or the Gorio's Vengeance in the turn that he needed to go off. Yeah, so um, I think I like taking the Ritual here, because ja Jack knows Jacob's list, and he probably knows the, the most realistic chance that Jacob has of winning is by casting a Tendrils, so um, getting rid of a Ritual is probably a reasonable plan. You already have a Clock, um, you basically need to dodge it for seven turns, plus you have like Counterspell and a Force of Will, so decides to go for Silence instead. Um, again, I think that's fine, as long as you know what Jacob's plan is, you, you know that he can win with Tendrils. And for three we go, so now the clock is on, and Jacob is working with some very good information here, so this is definitely going to be a tough game uh, and, for Jacob to win. And we have a Jace, and I like getting the Jace out there. Yeah, as do I. I mean, he's... Yeah, you, you know his hand. Um, you, you know he's not winning with uh, Tendrils this turn. I mean, not only does he know his hand, but he knows his deck. Yeah. I and mean, they have the list. So getting Jace out there, I like it. Just I like brainstorming here. Um, don't think you need to Fate Seal because there is a Marsh Flats in play. Um, I would get a little more gas in your hand. I mean, get yourself in that... In that uh in a position where you just can never lose, which is one that Jack likes to get himself in quite a bit. Yeah, I think, yeah, so again, I like brainstorming here because you want to get another blue card so you don't have to pitch a Force of Will or a Counter Spell. Um, and two, exactly what he has. So three, Counterbalance, Elspeth, and Tundra are the draws. You see Force of Will, Force of Will, Counter Spell in his hand, and he's basically setting it up yeah. so that he does have two Force Wills and two blue cards. Passes the turn back. So, you know, again, one of these situations where uh, Jack looks like he just can't win, lose the game at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but this time he actually has two th sign legitimate threats in play. You know? yeah. Attacking from two completely different angles yep. as well. And, uh, you know, Jacob sacks the Marcelites, gets another land. Tundra here. Not sure if he has a brainstorm or not. Um, we saw his land last turn, we, hand last turn from the click, but we didn't see what he drew. So, I'm Jack gonna shuffle that, and we'll see if Jacob, what Jacob can draw this turn again. It's a pretty dire situation here. 
I feel like, you know, he would only play this game on if he's actually won from this position before. And, yeah, I mean, he definitely has, uh, like you said, he couldn't win with tendrils. Again, it's a one-up, but it is a realistic win for him. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, he doesn't know how good Jake's, Jack's hand is, so. So you do see Jack draw Elspeth for the turn. And I think he, he, he was thinking about just attacking, but um, now I think he's thinking about maybe casting the Elspeth. Yeah, I like, I like the fact that Elspeth puts Jacob on a virtual three-turn clock, but it's realistically a two-turn one because it makes it so that he can't uh, crack the Marsh Latch because it's going to put him down to 12 and make it two turns. And especially, again, when you do have the double force, it will back up and, and rest in peace already in play. And he also has a ponder, which I, I, I like putting the ponder on top of your deck so that you can um, counter that ritual. You can counter... Um, uh, a and you can counter a ponder, you can counter a Gitax and probe, you can counter a brainstorm. Um, but he decides to. Oh, yeah, and so there's a concession. I would have, yeah. Jacob knows he can't win from that position, so. Um, Alright, so Jack won the first game, which yep. is uh, probably the hardest game for him. Yeah, you know, one one big deal there is that he was on the play there, so Jacob did take a mulligan on the draw, but Jacob would rather be on the play. Uh, either way, we are going to cut back to the booth here very quickly for you guys. Um, time to give away that full year of premium, our last giveaway here over the course of the weekend, giving out, as usual, a full year in our finals match. Just simply going to ask you guys a question. I have you tweet the answer to hashtag SCG Premium. We will select one winner uh, from the people who do get the answer correct. Uh, and the question... Eh, this time, not going to be a very difficult one. Um, in Within Jack's deck, he does have a card that Osip and I did overlook when we were talking about this matchup. Um, you know, it stops uh, Jacob from being able to uh, shallow grave and Gorio's Vengeance a Grizzlebrand back into play. I'm not quite sure how we missed it, but yeah, it's been a long <laughs> couple of days. It's been so, a long day. Yeah, nobody's perfect. Uh, but if you can name that two-mana enchantment that makes it real difficult uh, to reanimate creatures from the graveyard... Um, that Jack was able to play that game will give you uh, one winner a full year of premium so there's another little softball for you guys um, but again tweet the answer to hashtag SCG premium our directors over here will select one winner and we will announce that after this match is over uh, as far as sideboards are concerned as Jacob Corey is going to be on the uh, on the play this game excuse me down a game <sighs> two copies of Pithing Needle two copies of Massacre uh, you're also going to find Echoing Truth here, which is almost certainly going to come in. you got to get that rest of piece mm -hmm. off the board. Uh, three copies of Surgical Extraction, a Hercules Recall, two copies of Silence, which I think are actually quite interesting here, uh, two copies of Pull from Eternity, and two copies of Chain of Vapor. I think you're going to want to bring those bounce spells in just to get rest in peace off the table and try to yeah, go back off since he, need had, to do that. he had no outs game one uh, to that. It also would be nice to maybe bounce one of those counterbalances as well. Um, Silence is one where, you know, Jack does have some counter spells in his hand, and it does a proactive way to make sure that he can go off, so maybe you see that coming as well. And lastly, uh, those copies of Pithing Needle, while they're not great, um, you know, it can shut down Sensei's Divine Top, and, you know, that's not something to be ignored, I don't think. It can also shut down a, uh, a Jace Divine Sculptor as well. Yeah, and uh, Jack's got a lot of diverse cards in his sideboard. Um, he's got a Pithing Needle, which can name Grizzlebrand, which I like coming in. Relic of Regenitus, which again, um, graveyard uh, removal is important. Um, a Graph Digger's Cage, which again, another great anti-graveyard card. He's got a third counterbalance, which we saw um, just elicited a concession out of Jacob, so um, probably bringing that one in. Uh, I like Vendillion Click because, again, it's a th it's a threat that allows that, that it can play at the end of Jacob's turn as, a, as opposed to cons committing it on his turn. Um, probably, I, could, I like boarding in the Humility, too, just because, again, you're just overwhelming um, Jacob with the number of cards that he has to bounce. So I kind of like bringing in the Humility, too. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so that's one, two, three, four, five. That's six cards he can bring in. But he's got plenty of cards he can take out. Um, don't love Elspeth in this matchup. Don't really love um, Detention Sphere in this matchup because, again, it's not like the show-and-tell matchup where it can actually do something. Um, if, if Jacob actually gets a fatty in play, he's going to win with it. Um, I like, uh, I, I don't really love Vance or Shaper Savant in this matchup either, to be honest. Um, because if, if it's Grizzlebrand's in play, it's going to be doing a lot of work. Um, he's going to be drawing like 14 cards, and probably he's going to be able to figure out another way to get into play again. Um, I also don't like Helm Obedience right now, um, and I think you can probably cut a couple of swords to plowshares as well, as well as the Entreat the Angels. So um, a number of cards that uh, Jack can actually cut 
um, be interesting to see what he decides to do. Um, but again, yeah, definitely don't like the entreats, don't like the de uh, detention sphere, or the Elspeth, um, or the Venser, to be honest. Yeah, there's definitely some cards that he can move out here. Um, and as you said, he's going to bring in enough cards that make that attack from so many different uh, angles, and just they're they're so incredibly different that it's hard to sideboard against them and play around them all. You know, just yeah. makes, puts him in a situation where he just has to go for it. Yeah, you know? he just has he has so many cards that are actually cheap, like Piping Needle, Relic, Graph Digger's Cage, Rest in Peace, Counterbalance. Like he has so many cheap cards that can come to play on turn one or two. Um, and Jacob only has so many bounce spells. He's got two Chain of Vapors, one Echo Troop. That's really it. Um, he's got a Hercules Recall, which I could see maybe bringing in just because you know, you know, cards like Python, you know, Relic, and Graph Digger's Cage are coming in probably. So you could see him maybe boarding in the Hercules Recall too, but that's still four cards. Yeah, that's Four not cards in good. total that can deal with this wide variety of threats. Yep. And one of them can't even deal with the rest in peace, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's definitely going to be tough for Jacob Games uh, 2 and 3 here just because Jack still has those permission spells, still have cards like Counterbalance, but now he has anti-graveyard cards on top of the rest in peace that he already has in the main deck, so. Yeah. It's gonna be tough. Yep. You can't just hope to Cabal Therapy naming rest in peace anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, those Cabal Therapies have, I mean, they, they were okay in game one, but they have gotten substantially worse now. Yeah, there's just too many diverse hate cards here. Yeah. There's such a wide range of hands that Jack can keep now as well. Yeah. By having all those one ofs, you know, before he may have been mulliganing to try to find rest in peace, as we saw earlier when he played against uh, Jason Polkowski from Dredge, where he mulliganed a four, found a rest in peace, and actually ended up winning. Now, you know, he can find Graph Trigger's Cage, uh, Pie the Needle, just a, 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 an abundance of cards again, and it's hard to imagine um, what he's, you know, let's say he keeps the seven cards, what's he snap keeping? Yeah. You know, that's, that's the tough part now. It's a. Uh... Like if you don't even count the the counterbalances or the or uh, he basically has six cards um, that can disrupt Jacob's combo um, that he can have in his opener, and only three of them are redundant. So a cabal therapy, it's gonna be tough for Jacob to know what to name on turn one um, before Jack can hide them from a brainstorm. So um, definitely like Jack's position um, after board. We'll see um, how it plays out though. Alright, let's see. Jacob's happy. Yep, and you know, and that, Jack is not. You can see Jack's hand was actually pretty good. He had a couple of lands, he had a brainstorm, he had a ponder, he had a top, but none of his hate cards. Yeah, no reason. So, he has so many hate yeah, cards, there's no reason not to aggressively no, mulligan. No reason not to go for it. You know, you can't you can't risk losing to on turn two. Yeah. He didn't he, even have a force of will, so. And we've seen Jack take these mulligans before. Again, he did play Jason Wilkowski during round five of this tournament and took a mulligan to four. Jason playing dredge. Um, uh, managed to mulligan into a one land hand, or I think it was a two land hand, or one land hand with sensitive divine top, no rest in peace, and actually ended up finding a rest in peace with a top activation. So he is not afraid to mulligan that far down to find what he needs to win the game. Yeah, and again, this is one of those things where perfect information like he had earlier in the match just makes it so much better for him because he knows exactly what he needs to do in terms of mulliganing, which is, which is something a lot of players um, really don't do a good job of, you know. It's like uh, you really need to know um, when you need to be aggressive with your mulligans because a lot of players just lose the games just because they don't mulligan aggressively enough. Simple as that, you know? Yeah. So, let me see here. It looks like we're going to... Looks like Oh, we see at least a counterbalance there. Um, looks like there's a Caracas. I think he's got top counterbalance. Don't think he has two blue, though. But it looks like it's good enough. All right, ponder it is. So yeah, it looks like he has. Um, yeah, can't quite make up the hand, but he has at least a top counterbalance, I believe. Yeah, you're looking at top a tundra counterbalance, and a couple mystery cards there in the back. Rock Crocus as well. Jacob going to keep with his ponder past the turn back. We'll see what Jack draws for the turn. It is an entreat the angels. A little bit surprised to see mm -hmm. that in this deck still. Yeah, I would have um, shipped that to the board immediately, but again, he has a lot of cards in his main deck that aren't very good in this matchup, so um, he, maybe there's only one left. Marshall Lat's going to be sacrificed here for Jacob. We're going to search out a Tundra, and let's see if it is showtime or not. As it is pretty difficult to, uh, well, to just decide just to go for it here. I mean, yeah, if, it's, if it is showtime, I believe it will... Oh, well, 
this certainly makes things a lot easier. Yeah, depending on who he's targeting with that thought seize, this will certainly make things a lot easier. And it is Jack, and he's going to spread that hand <sighs> to counterbalance and entreat the Angels and Arid Mesa and Iker Akins. Yeah, and he, you know, Jack kind of had a, let out an audible sigh. Seems a little defeated, kind of knows what's up now. If Jacob actually does pull the trigger, he has no way to interact with it whatsoever. So um, let's see if Jacob actually does have it. I think well, he, let's see what he's, take. he's going to take and treat the angels. I think. Uh, I've again, seen some, I've seen some trolls. I've seen some trolls in my life, and this is a children of Corliss. Okay, <laughs> not at quite the follow up I think any of us were expecting here. <laughs> and that's a and pass. That is a pass. Okay. Okay, so, <laughs> and I think I think even Jack's surprised yeah. by that. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna see an Aaron race get sacrificed here. Okay, well, on the, on you know, the good news is that even if Jack does have a rest in peace, Jacob at least has a win condition in play. Yes. So. Yes. <laughs> the children will give the beats. Um, I'm wondering what's in Jacob's hand because he kept it. As you see, a counterbalance here now, so all the ones are off. Um, yeah, the ones are off. Um, and whatever's on top too. Which means that. In tomb is you know. Yeah, and I mean we're looking at his deck list right now. Dark ritual, Cataxian Pro, Ponder, Brainstorm, In Tomb, uh, Reanimate, Silence, Cabal Therapy, Thought Seize, just you know, a few cards. As you see Polluted Delta and here comes the children. Also that one's off. Yeah. Yeah, no, no more children. children will be entering play. Yeah. And there is no cavern of souls in this deck either, so can't get it through that way. So we're going to see a top activation oh, wow. here. Enlightened Tutor, Flooded Strand, and a Counterspell. Oh, wow. Enlightened Tutor is pretty huge. He can, get, he can get the rest in peace now if he wants to, if he chooses to. So we're going to see and, draw a draw oh, of Flooded Strand. to draw land, so. Okay. Uh, again, having a one on top of his deck is still pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And, and you've seen Jack play these games just ultra conservative. You know, you can make an argument for just taking that Mighty Tutor, moving on. If he does play a one, you just put top deck on top of your deck, move on with life. But he's played these games ultra, ultra conservative. And I mean, there's no reason not to. He's being beaten down by a one one. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, he's got plenty of time to dig for something um, a little more impressive. Enlightened Tutor counter spell and island. He's going to take the island there, make yeah. sure he does hit his land drop, leave a one on top of his deck. And it, it's great because he has a one and a two now on top of his deck, so. He can counter Shallow Grave, he can counter a Tomb, he can counter Dark Rituals, he can yep. counter pretty much anything without sacrificing his top. Yeah, and this was the fear uh -huh. we talked about uh, in the pregame, just if he is able to uh, get a counterbalance on top and play, it's very, very hard for Jacob to win, and now you see a Blood Moon. Wow, Blood Moon. Surprising that that would be in the deck still. Um, I mean, granted, it's it would shut off a lot of Jacob's lands, but it would shut off all of Jack's lands as well, so... Don't think that's going to be entering play. Mm, you see Jack flip Caracas over. You're going to see an island come into play here. And he's just going to pass the turn back. So Children of Corliss can't give a beat down. 16 turn clock. Make it 15. And, uh, yep. Jack is pretty comfortable with, with his situation right here. He's just going to be keep making land drops. Make sure I can counter anything you, anything you cast. Eventually, I'll get a Planeswalker or a Vendillion Click, and I'll just win that way. So, yeah, um, yeah perfectly reasonable plan. He's, not, he's got 15 turns before <laughs> yeah, he has to really yeah. start worrying. To, to, to get things set up here, as Jacob's draw steps are just mostly irrelevant now because of the top plus counterbalance, one and two floating there. Yeah. You see him spinning top again, looking at the third card. And it looks, it looks like, like we saw... A go look at the land there. Oh, oh hell. Okay, okay. Well, that's something. That's a way to win the game. And that's a that's a and quick way to win the game. Chooses not to cast it. Yeah, I mean, at, at this point. Wants to wait a little bit. Yeah, at this point, you know, you know the lines of play that you and I may make in this game about wanting to get games over quickly, um, are just not in agreement with what Jack wants to do. And mm -hmm. I don't think that one way is right or the other. You know, we he can get this game over, but at the same time, he's playing ultra conservatively, making sure that nothing does go wrong. And you know, he might take. The Enlightened Tutor this time simply because he can set up the Helm of Obedience and Enlightened Tutor combo. Yeah, uh, and Enlightened and Tutor for Rest in Peace combo. Uh, yeah, and he, I mean, he still has a Ponder if he wants to counter things, but 
Um, yeah, we'll see what Jack chooses to do here. Um, again, he has perfect information. He knows what Jake will be doing. But again, he doesn't want us to worry about cards like uh, Echoing Truth or um, uh, Chain of Vapor. So might be just content with just hoping to draw um, a card like Jace the Mind Sculptor. Yeah. Um, that's really ideal. That's probably the, the card he wants to draw the most. Um, and then leave the one and two on top of his deck so that he can counter everything else that matters out of Jacob's deck. So we'll see if Jack is finding a move when he chooses not to. Jake going to draw a card. And going to come across with the children yet again. And that shot going to knock, excuse me, Jack down to 12. Yeah, and I kind of like taking the ponder there instead of a lane tutor just because you get to dig one card deeper anyway. If your plan is to basically just keep this line. Okay, so yeah. Okay, no see a needle. Going to reveal a ponder here. And Jacob going to pass the turn back. Jack going to rearrange here. You see ponder, counterspell, and a mystery card. So he had a, it looks like another top. Jack going to draw a card. Draws another senses to find out, cast that one, and just says go. Um, and yeah, again, perfectly content, just uh, expecting to eventually draw a Jace. Or, um, again, he still has the Helm combo if he really just doesn't draw anything good um, over the next 10 or so turns. So, yeah. um, still in good shape. And, and again, this is what Jack's, Jack deck, Jack's deck does. Um, it kind of looks like it doesn't do anything, but he's got such a stranglehold over over the match right now that he just kind of waits, waits, waits until he's just ready to do something. Yeah. yeah. You saw him ponder there, take the force of will to his hand, takes another one, going to push him down to 10. On a side note, I think this might be the most damage a Children of Qualys has ever done to an opponent before. Yeah, in the history. In the history of the game, yeah. You're going to see Jacob discard Shallow Grave. Jack going to draw a card, puts a Tundra right into play. And so let's see if he's comfortable tapping that in now. He is. Yeah, well, he, now he has, he still has access to Counterspell if he wants. All right, there's your Helm of Obedience. And then passes the turn back. Yeah, so he has a, a Force of Will, that, uh, a Counterbalance that he can pitch to the Force of Will. He still has a one drop on top of his deck along with the counterspell below it. He needs to dig for that, the counterspell. Um, so yeah, pretty good shape. Inevitability, Inevitability is, is yeah. what he is setting up right now. He's doing a nice job of it as you see a Cabal Therapy. Gonna reveal Sensei's Dividing Top. No one drops for you, Jacob. You're going to see a top rearrange. Um, okay, so that's that's a perfect card right there. That brainstorm allows him to actually pull the trigger with the Enlightened Tutor and still have a one and two drop on top of his deck if he wants to. Mm -hmm. So I think we're probably going to see the Enlightened Tutor put rest in peace um, next turn. So you're going to see Jacob come across again, knock Jack down to eight. Jace brainstorm, not exactly a Jace the Mind Sculptor, but good enough in this exact situation. So. Sensei's Divine on top of that. I think he wants to maybe draw a counter spell. Maybe he wants to put that on the stack. Yeah, put it on the stack. Okay, so he's going to draw. Oh, it looks like he drew the top instead. But now he's going to cast Enlightened Tutor. So yeah, that's, uh, again, he has a counterbalance in his hand and a Sensei's Divine top. So if he wants to, at any point, he could just brainstorm those two cards on top of his deck. Yep. And he's back to where he was before. Mm -hmm. Um... So, again, you know, very patient, um, and he's in a position now where he's just going to win in a single turn, and he's got plenty of counterspell um, backup. So, um, definitely a very conservative approach, but a very uh, safe approach that ensures victory, regardless of any kind of tricks that Jacob might have out of his deck. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you win at 18 or if you win at 1, yep. as long as you're not at 0. So Jacob might be thinking about maybe bouncing a helm now, or um, doesn't have many lines to sort of break this up. He does have like three bounce spells, but um, see a top he, activation here. He could uh, he could try maybe 
test surgical extraction to maybe shuffle the deck. Yeah, but I mean um, that can that can just be kind of the top. Yeah, so, so it's not extra. Pain. Not many things that Jack and Jake can do right here. Now you're gonna see Corio's vengeance. And that was a discard. Okay. So here we go. Rest in peace. The rest in peace is here. That's the combo with Helmet of Obedience. You're going to see a Purple's, Purple's recall. recall. Just gonna talk. Just oh, so here we go. Brainstorms on the stack. So we're gonna have a little bit of a fight here. I didn't think this would happen. Jacob gonna stack Polluted Delta, get out of 16. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why Jack really doesn't have to worry here because he still has top in play and he has two sack lands. Yeah. So he still has plenty, plenty, and he has a person on his hand too. Yeah. So um, I'm not too concerned right now. Yeah, you see the players organizing the stack here. Brainstorm, the most recent spell cast. So in response to uh, in response to Rest in Peace, we have Rurko's Recall, which Jack responded with with a Brainstorm. Jacob responded with by sacking a land. Uh, to fetch for another land, and now what are we going to have? Surgical extraction, or dark, dark ritual. ritual. Top activation. One, two, three. Got anything? Oh, we have enlightened tutor. Enlightened tutor. Counters a dark ritual. Brainstorm still on the stack. We have a new tomb there. Looks like Brainstorm now resolves. Yep. Counter <coughs> to go for the top. Yep. So now the two and the one are now on top of his deck, so effectively you can counter every card that Jacob tries to cast. Mm -hmm. You see Hercules like Recall? You see Jacob going to sack with the Hercules Recall on the stack. I mean, he's got something going on here. I'm not yeah. sure if it's going to be good enough, but you know, he's sat here long enough and sculpting his hands. So. Yeah. Again, I mean, um, maybe Chain of Vapor, maybe Surgical Extraction, but either way, we know that Jacob has a one and a two on top of the deck, and he can just activate top. He's going to cast Dark Ritual. He's going to activate the top. I think. He, I mean, I'm not totally in, in love with this. Like, you could just let the ritual resolve. Yeah. It's not that big a deal. He's basically, he's basically just, ba it looks like at this point he's just baiting him. Yeah, baiting him all his mana. You have to use all your mana on your turn. There's a counterbalance, counter circles recall. Now you see the rest in peace on the stack. You can respond to that with the blue yeah, delta cause, sack. Because look at that. By, by, by using a mana to, to counter the dark ritual, he basically um, was forced to tap all his live lands, so now he has two sack lands, which means he's going to have to sack them and cycle away uh, the, the one and the two on top of his deck. So, don't, uh, Of course, don't forget about that force. It will plus blue card. And Jack's yeah. Hand oh, yeah. He just definitely still a little has. bit of backup in Tomb. Again, it's, 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 this is responding to the rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or this is the rest in peace resolve. No, this no. is this is in response to the rest in peace though. Yeah, again, I'm not sure why you're why you care about this. You you have a two on top of your deck that counters Gorio's Vengeance, that counters Shallow Grave. Um, is there a card that you can entomb for? Um, not one that I see that matters all that much. Yeah, I'm not sure why Jack would care about this. It looks like Jacob's just baiting baiting Jack to make a mistake here. Yeah. And if that's the only thing you can do, that's all you can do. Yeah, because, you know, someone cast an Entomb in response to, <laughs> to rest, uh, rest in, in Peace. peace. Yeah. I, I normally wouldn't freak out about it, but, um, again, hey. I think Jack's trying to go through all the scenarios in his head, um, trying to figure out if there is something in his deck. Um, we have the deck list in front of us, so we can clearly see, you know, what matters. But And, and you know, they have the deck list as well. Um, so they are working with very good information. As, so, interested? Interesting. Very interesting. It, it could just be that J Jacob's just trying to tap Jack out completely so that he can't activate the helm this turn. Um, yep, Jack's still thinking about what he wants to do here. He said, okay, so what's it resolve? 
Ask if you can get me. It's in a macro, shuffles it back into his deck. And uh, Entomb goes back into his deck. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it doesn't look like Jacob has anything. Um, rest in pieces look like they're going to resolve. Tapping into the mana here, or. I feel like there may be some pandering. There's your Highland, there's your Helm, there's your deck, there's a handshake. And all right, right, all right. All right, so <laughs> Jack Colwell wins 2-0. There's just way too many cars that Jacob had to contend with. Yeah. And, um, you know, Counterbalance was an all-star in that match. And again, you said Abrupt Decay pushed uh, Counterbalance to the yeah. uh, fringe a little bit. I but it's it back 